Hello and welcome to another how to video. My name is Ditec, CTO at DVS, and this week we're going to take a look at a little something different. But before we move on, check out this. Dun dun dun. Real installers pin badge. This is one of 100. Jake and Mike and Callum, our marketing department, will be sending further details on how you can be the proud owner of one of these very limited edition pin badges. I'm lucky enough to get one, uh, more by bribery than anything, but I've got one of 100. We have 99 available left. Get your badge, wear your pride, and the marketing guys will give you more details around that. Don't forget, before you move on, click the subscribe button. Make sure you leave any comments that you want and we will help to answer them the best we can. Also, if you've got a smartphone, most of you have, make sure you download the DVS app. It's getting better each month. And for the Man Island members, click the download button. It's free, it's easy to get access to your account. If you want to come over or get content to download, be notified of competitions, our podcasts, our videos, etc., etc., etc. Okay, so what are we going to take out a look to? What are we going to take a look at today? I can't even speak. So mostly we look at the product, the technologies, etc. But sometimes we take a, a look at the devices or the tools and the software that support us in the background. And that's just as important as the technology itself. So today we're going to take a look at, at one of our Neon test monitors. So a test monitor, for those of you that are either new or don't use them, it's an electronic device that helps us test uh, set up and confirm, etc., the devices for our CCTV system. Now, these can be critical. Again, if you've got a laptop, you could use your laptop, and there are other ways of doing this. But a test monitor is a very handy way of doing it locally, setting up and focusing a camera, adding, activating an IP camera, testing a TVI camera, a network connection, etc. So, today we're going to take a look at our Neon. Dun, dun, dun. TM Pro Plus. So we've got two versions, the TM Pro Plus and the Pro Normal. The TM Pro Plus is the more expensive of the, more expensive of the two, it has more functions and features, and it's a bigger screen on there. So if we take it out of the box, so there is a full user manual in there. So a lot of test monitors are generic, um, very familiar uh, functions and features across the different test monitors. And there are only a few factories that do make the test monitors. Um, this is one of the better factories. In fact, these brand uh, for a lot of the bigger manufacturers. So we've gone direct to source to secure these and bring them in. And we have been bringing these in for about 18 months now. Um, and they do make for other vendors. So I'm very confident and very happy to be able to offer this to our customer base. So you get a bag. In the TM Pro Plus bag, you get cables, test cables. So the BNC, etc., plus the crocodile clips for the voltage. This has a built-in voltmeter, so you can use it not only as a tester for TVI, IP, etc., even Wi-Fi testing. It also comes with the um, voltmeter function. So it's again a really, really powerful product. Because not only do we want to test the, t the CCTV side of it, you know, if you've got uh, power, so 12 volt, 24 volt AC, etc., and you need to test make sure it's live or what ampage your camera's drawn, etc. then that integral function will really assist you day to day. So I can't speak today, God. Okay, so there are the test cables included. Put them to the side. You have a LAN cable for testing. There's one of those micro cables that allow you to plug it into a camera or into a network, etc. You have the power supply with different region, different global regions. Uh, different elements so you can plug it in wherever you are power up and charge your test monitor another set of test leads so insulated test leads again with the probe style on there so if you don't want the crocodile clips you can use the probe style a fiber tester it's also got a fiber test function on there so you can test fiber and there's the adapter there is the uh, banding which goes around the bag so you can actually hang it around your neck or shoulder put that to the side and the main star of the show is this test monitor so i'm going to give you a quick run through of the test monitor 
So it's a touch screen monitor, seven inch display, uh, buttons on the side, so they're physical push buttons, but a touch screen seven inch monitor. On the rear or underside, you have the test ports, so for voltage, amperage, etc. HDMI in and HDMI out, so you can either take a HDMI in from a DVR, NVR, and this can become your local DVR screen to enable you to set the device up. So HDMI in. The only thing that I would mention with this is they are 1080p. This only supports 1080p. The older one was 720p. It's been upgraded to support 1080p HDMI input now uh, and also output. So you can output from the screen or do a loop through uh, if you want to put this in, in parallel. Um, what, what this allows you to do, like I said, if you're an engineer and you want to plug this into an NVR, DVR and use the mouse and have this as your setup screen, that becomes very, very powerful. Especially if you're in a loft and you don't have room to take a monitor up or work in that confined space. This is nice and neat and compact, battery powered and will enable you to do the setup via this monitor. On the back, you have two Wi-Fi antennas, so you can flip those up to do Wi-Fi testing or link to a network for upgrading of the device, for instance. And we'll fold, fold these away. It's also got a kickstand, so you can put it onto a, a table to keep it upright. Two batteries, one either side. Remember, when you first get the unit, take the batteries out. They simply pull out and remove the cover on the back. Those of you that don't remove the cover, you will find it will not power up. So remove the covers, replace the battery covers, and fully charge the unit before you intend to use it. Okay. Moving on, so we've got the audio input, we've got reset button, we've got a fuse there. So if you are doing testing a voltage and it does damage the fuse, you can simply replace that pop-out fuse. It's got the voltmeter, etc. Um, ohms, volts, milliamps, etc. HMI input output. And then on the top of the device, you've got... Let's move, manipulate you so you can actually see this. So you've got network connection and PoE. This will provide a PoE out for an IP camera. So if you have an IP camera that's PoE, a PTZ it's not going to do. But a standard IP camera, and you want to plug it into this device here to activate it or to do some configuration, it provides PoE out. And some network testing. So you can test for PoE uh, and faults on the network. And the same there, you have one that allows you to test a normal network without PoE out. So again, uh, network breakages, etc. So you've got two different LAN ports there. You've also got video in and out, so for TVI. So this allows CVBS, TVI, AHD, CVI, all of those formats. It's loop in and loop out. You've also got the fiber tester port here. So you can simply, depending on what cable you're testing, undo this chain. And you've got the fiber test port there. And you can actually undo this one for the bigger one. There you go, and then you've got the adapter in there as well. So you've got a couple of different ways of changing that adapter and what you're looking to measure. You've also got RS-485 for PTZ control. For TVI, this does do, do TVI uh, PTZ telemetry, so up the coax. So if you've got a TVI PTZ or a camera and you need to use the menu on here to adjust the camera settings, it will also provide a TVI UTC, which is a very handy function. So RS-485, you've got a built-in LED light. So if you're in a dark area, you can illuminate the area using that LED light. 12 volt out, USB slave, USB host, and RS-485 like I've already mentioned. So I'm just gonna quickly tighten this back up. Like I said, you have to uh, take those battery seals off the back, make sure the unit is fully charged, and then we can actually look at using the unit. So I'm just gonna transfer, oh, so you've got like the protective cover there, and you've also got the buttons on there, so I just do that. And you can see the different command buttons there. What I will show you is how effective this can be. So we'll plug a, an inactive um, IP PoE camera into this port as a general, um, demonstration to show you how this works. So I'll plug a P PoE camera into this, and then I'm going to link the Wi-Fi on this unit, I'm going to link it to my phone. Now reason being, if I link this you to this as a hotspot, I can use Height Connect as the app, 
to then activate and set my camera, check the view, etc. That is the most easiest way of doing this, using your smartphone linked to this Wi-Fi to complete the configuration and the setup, etc. And then I'll try and touch on some other functions and features um, which really make this a very, very good unit. It's in a rubberized, quite tough case, molded unit. If you look after it, this will last for years and years. And again, with the replaceable batteries, it means we don't have to throw this away. We can replace the batteries should that need arise and we can store it in our bag. Okay, I'm gonna connect this up, position the camera so you can see what I'm doing. So stay tuned. Hello, okay, so we've got the unit set up now and uh, I have turned the ISO down a bit so the screen is a little bit more visible to you. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do is run through all of these functions and features as quickly as we can so you have a good understanding of what this unit can do. I am going to come back to the first one, the OnViv test, later because that's the most important one. I have connected a camera to this, so we have a, a Hike Vision PoE camera connected here, uh, which is this one, and you can see it's flashing away so it is powered by PoE. Now I've got the two antennae for Wi-Fi up and connected, so they're just popped up um, for its maximum potential. So moving from uh, through the menus, coming back to on with last, analog menu. This allows me to select CVI, TVI, AHD, or leave it as auto detect. So I can basically choose my input type, see my TVI or my CVI, AHD, CVBS, standard analog camera in this view here. I'm then able to set my PTZ settings. By selecting the PTZ, I can adjust the protocol as required for whatever camera is connected, either if it's a height vision, the TVI up the coax, or using the RS485 output here um, as an RS485 hardwired option. So that is how you select what camera format. Again, you can leave it as auto detect and digital zoom, zoom, full screen, snapshot and record video. So you can record video and take snapshots to this unit for reference later on, especially if you're using it in part as, a, as part of a commissioning phase. Um, and HDMI, I can select HDMI to see a HDMI source if I need to, which I'll show you shortly. In fact, if I take a HDMI cable now, seems we're right by it, I'm going to plug a HDMI cable in to my laptop. So a standard HDMI cable, HDMI cable here into HDMI input here. And that is how I see, so I've just connected a laptop to it. I can click full screen there, which will allow me to then navigate through. So if I use, so if I am using this, for instance, to set up a DVR, NVR, using that option does allow me to then interact with the NVR, DVR as a portable test monitor, especially like I said yesterday, or in the beginning of this video, uh, in cramped and small confined spaces, use this test monitor, set the NVR, DVR up using the mouse with this, you know, fully um, capable screen, which will then give you that input to the system. Pressing the mode button here will take you, it's the home button effectively. So moving through the menus, I'll disconnect the HDMI because we don't need that anymore. Moving through the menus, we've got network test tools. This allows me to do a ping, a sniff, or a list of sub there. So I can connect to Wi-Fi, set IP, uh, I can do a ping test, I can do packet sniffing, and again, it'll just do, there's no devices found because it's not connected to the network, but that's how you can use that network test tool. Press mode again, or it has found it's found a device on the Wi-Fi, look. Wi-Fi RF tool. So this is your spectrum analysis um, tool. You can see that it's already doing some spectrum analysis here, and you can see the different Wi-Fi um, units here and where they sit within the channels. So you can see there's the frequencies and there's the channel. So it's a nice little unit. I can actually freeze that chart to look at it, and I can move the scale left and right using the bottom if I need to, and then freeze it. It supports both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, so I can actually change it to 5 gigahertz. You can see a much narrower bandwidth. I can change the um, horizontal, the scan range, the center frequency, etc. So it's a nice test tool in its own right. Wi-Fi test. 
sorry, and not the camera then. Uh, Wi-Fi test, I can jump onto a network. So if I wanted to, I could select the DVS network here. Click connect. Now that would connect me to the Wi-Fi. It's just about connected there. You can see there's a green icon just below my finger, which represents it's connected to the Wi-Fi. And now I can see uh, the data within that and I'd be able to see devices on that. So you can connect it to any Wi-Fi network and then do this spectrum analysis, etc. also, as well as the packet sniff. Okay, and then signal monitor. It allows you to see the air signal and Wi-Fi signal of the different Wi-Fi's that are available. And again, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz available. Press mode to go home. Web browser, so you can simply open a web browser and type in a web page and connect to it if that's what you choose to do. Now it is a bit slow, you'd use a laptop for that preferably, especially if you're gonna do downloading. Press mode. Cable TDR test. So again, this is connecting for these two ports here, the blue and the green where my finger's moving. We've already got one connected there, but any of those ports there you can test on. So you've got blue represents blue port, the green segment represents the green port. Now it's already got the PoE connected on this blue port and you can see it's bringing back, it's a five meter cable. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it showing as five meter. It is a five meter patch lead. The attenuation only really works when the cable is over 10 meters long. But again, I can test this port or I can test this green port here and do a continuous test if I want, which will continually test those ports. So a nice little test tool. Press mode to go home. Playback, so if I saved any video, so during the process, maybe I was doing a TVI camera and I saved snapshots and video, I'd be able to play that back here. Data monitor, RS-485 data monitor, I can connect an RS-485 source in there and see the data that is being sent here not really applicable in this day and age um, more you know probably 10 years plus ago we'd use that quite often now that's not used as much mode signal generator this allows me to send a test video card so this test video card here when my finger is pointing will be sent to either the sdi so standard video cvbs hdcvi hdtvi ahd or through the HDMI output. Using the HDMI out on the bottom of the device here, I can also generate this output card to a device. Now, the, why this is handy is if you think you've got a broken camera but the cable is intact and working, simply connect this signal output, so the TVI or the, uh, the coax or the HDMI, select the appropriate output, and then that will send that test card to that third party device and therefore you can establish that the cable is working and intact and it is in fact the camera or a setting on the camera that is affecting the output. Mode again. OPM, the optical power meter. Again, using um, the fiber connector like I showed you yesterday during the intro. Connect it on there and then that allows you to test the fiber and you've got different settings of so different wavelengths, DPM, MW, hold display, calibrate, record data, save the report, etc. So that is all specifically to do with the fiber itself. Press mode to go home. Digital multimeter. Again, I've got two cables connected here. So what I will show you is I have the red leads and black leads connected already so they're the, they're the test leads now this can test ac dc up to 600 volt ac so mains voltage in the uk will be absolutely fine ohms resistance capacitance so all of the things that you need to test for your day-to-day -day workings as a ccd or security installation engineer this multimeter can absolutely do that so i'm going to take a simple power source here a 12 volt power source and i'm going to change it to dc voltage it is Connect it in there and you can see 12 volt already on there. Now I can start recording this data because maybe I need to record this um, as part of a commissioning process to, um, to give the data output. Stop that and then save the report if I need to to a USB stick. Um, and again, I can change it to AC, current, resistance, capacitance, diode and conductivity there. Hold the display, but it is auto ranging. So that's a fantastic device, an all-in-one test meter. So whilst most of us will have the test meters, calibrated test meters, this is an all-in-one device. So if anything, if you just carry this one device, it will cover every or most eventualities. 
So there we go, we'll get rid of those task leads. Press mode to go home. And the last one is the SATA. So if I go into SATA, now because I'm connected to the Wi-Fi, like you can see there's a green one there, I can view upgrade information, I can check for new, it's checking for a new version. Version one, 0 0.197 is the latest, so there's not going to be, it'll come back as the latest version. When it comes back, it'll come back latest version. I upgraded this yesterday. It's very important that you do upgrade this. So when I first get the unit or quarterly or whenever that is periodically, connect to a Wi-Fi, check for a new firmware and then do the upgrade process because it does improve the functions and features and the stability of this unit. You can change the language, keypad tones, backlight system time. So if I need to, I can change the backlight there to make it brighter. And then you've got keypad tones, time date, uh, system date, etc. And then click save. Also, you'll see, you can see the two battery um, voltages or the battery um, charge status there. They are fully charged. I charged it last night before making this video. Okay, so moving on to the OnVIF test tool, like most will use this to activate the height vision camera. Generic height vision camera out of the box, you can see at the top here. Now, all of the height vision cameras now come inactive out of the box and we are required to set a secure password. So using the OnVIF test tool, we're gonna open this. Now there is a way using an app I might do a standout video on this. This is the easiest way as a self-contained unit, and maybe I'll do a standout one, how to use the app uh, as a two minute one past that. But again, the green column shows us anything that's connected to the green, blue column for the blue. So it's telling me I've got uh, a device connected, it's drawing power, so 48 volt uh, PoE, and it's around 2.2 watt in power. It's a low power camera with no infrared. Same, if I connected the Wi-Fi it would be connected uh, and show me the data there. Now I'm gonna click next. Now I found the camera, it's highlighted in yellow here and I need to activate it. Now there is an option here by my thumb or finger called activate camera. Now I can click rediscover or manually add a camera but I'm gonna click activate camera. I need to set a secure password. So I'm going to set a secure one. Just a, a nice and simple one. And I'm gonna click confirm. The camera is now activated. So it's taken a snapshot in this interface of that camera to show that we have connected it. Now, if I click next, I can open up a web interface, but because there's no plugin that would work on that, there's a bit pointless opening the web interface in my opinion. But I'm gonna click next. And this now gives me the live video from this camera. So I can now, as an engineer, set it up like that, gives me a nice clear image, tells me all of the encoding information, so resolution, frame rate, encoding, IP address, camera name, etc. So it's a really simple way of connecting this up and doing, if you're an engineer, if you're an engineer, this allows you to do that configuration on site next to the camera while you're up a, a, a ladder or a cherry picker, etc. and without the need to revisit it. Now. I can select a lot of the, uh, so I can take a snapshot if I want to, that'll save it. I can do digital zoom, record video, full screen. So if I need to go full screen, that will put that image full screen to allow me to uh, uh, focus it, zoom it, adjust it, etc. Now the other um, interesting one is this camera settings here. So I can go camera profile settings. So I can change the encoding al algorithm. So I could go to H.265 if the camera supports it. I can change the profiles. So resolution, quality, frame rate, if I need to adjust that down. Um, and again, this is all if the camera actually supports it. And then obviously the different profiles here. But the one thing you can do is this camera settings here. So if I go to camera settings, so it's got DHCP disabled. The IP address, if I double click in it, I can change the IP address to match our uh, IP address scheme on site. I can do service, so like gateway, etc. I can do the ports, factory deset, uh, or just a reboot users. And then info gives me the info of this camera. And I can even generate a report if I need to. 
and again going back to it it just shows all the information which i can adjust which enables me to move on i can click save on that and then cancel to come back now under camera profile settings some of these you aren't able to change like it's not changing this uh, mainstream one for instance like some cameras will allow you to do that and some cameras won't but it allows you to get it on the network with the correct details activated and when you add it to a recorder you would add it to a recorder and then adjust the frame rate uh, resolution uh, and the encoding algorithm once added to the recorder that's the way i do it and it's the easiest and most uh, stable way of doing that I, I can change the profile i can't even change the resolution oh, i can it does let me change the resolution look but the encoding algorithm is a no for that um and that's it effectively i can now cancel that again with the live video there we go and that is how we use our test monitor that is the most important steps around this test monitor that i really wanted to highlight so you've got a much better understanding of how this product can help you in your day-to-day -day working i hope you enjoyed the video please leave any comments or contact your dvs sales rep for more information please make use of the video and we look forward to welcoming you to the neon test family as a everyday device take care everyone